Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com slash free. Each task that you create within your project file must have a duration. This duration can be measured in any unit of time from minutes to months, but most often is measured in terms of hours, days, or weeks. When entering your tasks into the task list, you can enter the duration into the duration column of the table view within the Gantt chart view. You may also enter this information into the task information dialog box on the general tab if you're using this method of data entry for your tasks. Now when you set the duration of a task, remember that Microsoft Project will schedule the task as soon as possible but only will schedule for time during available work hours that you allowed for the project when you defined it. So for example, if you selected the standard calendar when you defined your working schedule when you created your project initially, any tasks that are scheduled will only be scheduled during Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., since that's the standard calendar. Also note that duration can be entered in several ways using the following abbreviations if desired. You can use M for minutes, H for hours, D for days, W for weeks, and MO for months. So for example, using a standard work schedule for a task that starts on a Monday and has 5D as the duration, it will finish on the following Friday of that same week. Since Microsoft Project is a task scheduling application, note that you will most often set the duration of a task and not the specific start date. When you set a specific start date, Microsoft Project will interpret that as a constraint on when that task can begin and will never schedule it ahead of the specified start date even if it was possible. Most often, tasks are linked to other tasks, and one task can begin whenever the other finishes. Setting a specific task duration and linking tasks to each other in order of the necessity of their completion allows Microsoft Project to change the start and end times of tasks in a project file in order to reflect the scheduled reality of the workload. Also note that it's possible to schedule tasks to occur on non-working times as indicated by your scheduling calendar. So for example, assume that you need to enter a task such as wait for paint to dry when creating a remodeling project file. Now note that although this is a critical step, it's also a passive step and requires no active work. In this case, you could enter the task as an elapsed duration task, that is, one that simply occurs regardless of the working schedule. To enter an elapsed time duration for a task, you simply enter the abbreviation E before the time abbreviation used. So using the example, you could enter an elapsed task duration for the wait to paint to dry task by typing 2EH into the duration field for that task. That sets an elapsed time of two hours that do not need to be performed during scheduled work hours for the selected task. So while the vast majority of tasks that you perform are not elapsed time tasks, it is useful to know how to set the duration of these types of activities if needed. Also note that if you're using the task information dialog box for task detail entry, you can check the estimated checkbox next to any duration that you enter in order to explicitly define the task as an estimate in the task list. Of course, the durations of many tasks in many types of projects are estimates, but checking the estimated checkbox simply adds a question mark to the end of the duration time. This gives others a visual indicator that the time shown is just an estimate. 
You can also perform the same activity by typing the question mark at the end of any duration that you enter directly into the task list in the duration column. So these are just two different ways of performing the same activity. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com free.